Some of the most useful and time-saving features in Excel are the options to link data across worksheets. Hi, I'm Dawn. In this online training, we'll look at how to link several worksheets together within one workbook. We'll explore an option that includes three-dimensional links, and we'll explore how you can link to data across multiple workbooks. Do you have a workbook with related data, such as separate worksheets for individual months or different locations? How do you create a summary of these detailed worksheets? The most common type of link in Excel is also the easiest, that is a reference to a value in a different worksheet within the same single workbook. Here's an example. In this workbook, we have individual worksheets for each of the states. To be able to easily track this information without having to navigate to each one of those worksheets, we'll create a summary of that data. Now, linking is a lot easier than often we will hear. In this case, I want to see the total for Texas. And I'll start as we would with any other formula, and that is with an equals. Next, we'll navigate to Texas, and then specifically, to where that total exists. Now we could add a lot more to this, that is this could be a calculation with multiple cells, but if I simply want to see this total, all I need to do is hit enter. That's it. So now we have this total and it will update as this information changes. Let's look at what we just created here. In the cell, the reference is equal to the worksheet so we see the tab name, the worksheet name, Texas, exclamation, and then the cell where that data resides. Now, should we insert additional rows? This will update just as any other formula would. Let's try this again. Now I want to display the total for the Colorado data. I can do it the same way as before, but we'll put a little bit of a twist on this. And that is, we'll start with once again with equals, and then sum. Next, we'll navigate to Colorado. Even though we have a total, there might be times when you don't or you want to perform a different calculation. In this case, I'll simply highlight the range of values that represent that total and then complete with an enter. So I still have a total that will update as this information updates. Notice once again that the reference is to that worksheet name. So the worksheet name, exclamation, and then in the range of values. Let's repeat this for the next two states. We'll simply do an equal to, reference the total in that specific worksheet. Now let's explore something that happened here with the New Mexico reference. Notice those single quotes. In Excel, we'll see the single quotes around any reference where there are spaces in that name. This is called a character string. This is how we refer to it either manually or how Excel created it for us to ensure that this all stays together. That is one of the advantages that we have by using the pointing method that is where we simply click to and navigate to that location is Excel helps us to build these formulas. And so although we could have typed all of this out directly, it's a big time saver for us to have Excel help us out. There's nothing wrong with this. In fact, all the other entries could also be surrounded by those quotation marks, but they would not be necessary unless that worksheet reference or name changes. Now, of course, we could total this, and I'll do so using a quick keyboard shortcut, and that is Alt and the Equals key. You might know that as a keyboard shortcut that automatically builds our sum function for us. And we don't have to make any updates to it because Excel captures the closest range, with, which happens to be correct, and so I simply hit Enter to accept that. And that's all we need to do to create links within one workbook between the different worksheets in that workbook. 
Although we don't need it for this project, let's look at one other thing that we could do here as well. And that is we can create calculations between the different worksheets. So just to give you that as a reference, I'll just move over here. And I want to create a calculation that adds the values in Texas and Colorado together. So to do that, I'll simply do an equals. Now I know I have these values right here in the sheet, but maybe I'm in a different location. I don't have that available to me. So we'll start it once again with that pointing method. I'll go to Texas, here's the total, and now I'll add a plus, and now navigate to Colorado, select the total, and hit enter. So there we have that total, or that calculation, where we're adding those two values together. Even though it isn't required or needed for this particular workbook, I wanted you to be able to see that there's a lot of flexibility about how we do the calculations. You're already likely building lots and lots of calculations and formulas. The only difference here is that the source, the information, is simply stored somewhere else besides the current active workbook. Now, should our data update in any way, so for instance, we move here to the texture sheet and I'll insert a new row. And we'll, let's just say that we have some new information here. I'll copy this down. And so I've got some new data. And for expediency, I'll simply enter this in and I'll copy from the previous cell above that. A quick keyboard shortcut for that would be Control D for duplicate. And so now this has updated our total. We have added some more information to this. This also could happen if we change the actual data within this. But when we come back to the summary, that information has also updated. Creating a 3D formula is another way to be able to create links to data in other worksheets within the same workbook. The key with this is that a 3D formula requires that each worksheet contains the exact same type of data, such as a worksheet total in the same location for each worksheet in the 3D reference. Let's look at these examples for a moment. So all of this product information, these same labels appear in the exact same locations in each of these sheets. So should I move to the other ones, south, east, west? Not only the same products, but also we're tracking the same type of data, in this case quarterly information for each of these locations. So that is key in building a 3D formula. There won't be as many applications for it, but it still might be a way for you to quickly be able to summarize information by building a different kind of link. Here's how you build a 3D reference. I'll move to our summary or master worksheet. Once again, it has the same structure as all of the others. Then we'll move to the first cell where we want to build the formula. This is going to be a sum. We'll begin it with an equal sum, open parentheses, and then we'll move to and navigate to that first sheet. We'll go to north. I'll click on that reference cell that is in the north sheet and this cell here, B5. Now the trick is, Hold down shift, click on the last sheet of that range of worksheets. Notice that they're all lit up or selected. So now we're saying that we want to do a sum from north through west of the data found in this cell B5. I'll enter to complete this and then we'll look at the structure of this formula. So it simply is equal sum, the range north through west, exclamation to separate that worksheet from that cell, and then close print. Because our 
logic can be maintained across the worksheets, we actually can copy this. So we don't have to build it one at a time. So that's a really nice bonus. I'll simply use the autofill handle in this case, drag it down, and then drag it over. And then finally here, now this isn't always a luxury that we have, but I'll highlight all of these values here and highlight the row below and to the column to the right. And now we'll simply hit the auto sum button. Excel is smart enough to be able to populate our sum formulas into each of those selected cells. One of the cautions that we do have with this 3D formula approach is that right now the range is north through west. So should we move, for instance, to the south sheet and drag it outside of that range, perhaps I'll move it to the left of north, drop that in place. We have still have a range of north through west but it excludes the south values at this point. So that's one of the, the cautions that we have if you find a place for being able to take advantage of 3D formulas. Just as you can link multiple worksheets within a workbook, you can also link multiple workbooks. You do this by creating a formula in one workbook that refers to a cell, range, or a range name in another workbook. Now, references to other workbooks are called external references. A workbook with the data is called a source workbook, and the workbook with the links is called the destination workbook. You can maintain workbook links even if the workbook that is referred to is renamed. Why wouldn't you just put all the data into one workbook and create links that way? Well, in some cases you can, but the real value of linking becomes apparent when the source workbook is perhaps being maintained or primarily updated by another person or a group. You just simply may not have access to it all the time, or it might be a master workbook that multiple people in your team have access to and need to be able to work with. Similar to creating links within one workbook, creating a link across multiple workbooks is much easier than you might think. Just as with any other formulas, we start the formula in the cell where we want to see the result. So in this case, I want to link to a total that appears or is in another workbook with Colorado data. Start with an equals here, and then we'll navigate to that other workbook. Now this could be through your taskbar. You could also go to view, switch windows, and here this file's already open, so I'll pick Colorado and simply point to where that total is. This pointing method becomes a lot easier than if we actually have to type out that entire formula. In this case, all we're going to do is reference this total but it could also be a calculation or a formula to multiple cells that could be in different workbooks. For right now, to finish this, I'll simply hit enter. Now let's look at the logic or the syntax of what this created. The first part of this is the workbook name in square brackets then the sheet name, which in this case is sheet one, then an exclamation as a separator, and then the cell reference for where that total appears. Let's repeat this for the next one. So once again, equals, and then we'll navigate to where the other sheet is, One of the things to keep in mind is that you don't have to have all these workbooks open all the time. We'll see how we can manage that. We're simply opening them all right now to be able to build these links. Let's look at that syntax again. There's only one thing that's a little different here, and that is that we have the single quotes around that reference that includes the workbook name. And that is simply what we call a character string. That is, keep this all together because we happen to have a space in the name for New Mexico. 
and it's very common that workbooks would have spaces. So not a problem doing that. This is just the syntax or structure that Excel automatically builds when we use that pointing method. Now there's a different way that we can paste these links. Although it, it's not my preferred way, I think it's easiest to use this pointing method because you're in the destination workbook. Let's look at how we can do it through a paste instead. So in this case, I'm going to switch over to that Texas sheet first. This is the total I want to refer to. First, I'll copy it. I'll simply use Control C. You can use any technique you're most familiar with or that you prefer. Then we'll navigate back to that original file. That is where we're storing it, which is the sales summary. And we can use our taskbar for that as well. At this point now, we want to paste it, but we want to paste it as a link. We could do this through the Home tab of the ribbon. Instead, I'll right click here. And from the shortcut menu, here is the option to paste link. When I pick it, now we have created that link. We've pasted in the link back to that Texas sheet. Another way to be able to build our formulas, here once again I'll do an equals, but this time we'll build a simple calculation, a sum. Now I'll switch over to the Wyoming sheet, and although I do have a total, sometimes we might not, or we might want to calculate specific cells within a worksheet, I will highlight that range that I wish to sum, hit enter to complete this. I still have a reference back to that original. The difference is that I have now a sum and then of course that range of values. Our links across workbooks can be very simple or may have some complex calculations. Right now all of our links back to the source workbooks are pretty simple. That is, we just see the workbook name in that square brackets. And that's because the source workbooks are currently open. That external reference will include the path to the workbook if that source workbook is closed. And that's what I'll do. I'll move over to that workbook and now I'll close it. And notice now that we have this entire path to whatever location that might be. It might be your OneDrive, it might be SharePoint, it might be on your network, but you'll see the entire path when that workbook isn't open. We, we are able to know where to find that information. At this point, I'm going to save this workbook and close it. Next, I'll come back and open it. Now, this might be two days later, it might be a week later, so just keeping that in mind. And we'll open up that sales summary. This is what I wanted you to see. When we open up a workbook that has links to other workbooks, expect to see the security warning. At this point, those automatic links have been disabled. This is default in Excel to prevent automatic updating, which could launch programs or install malicious viruses and linked files, at least if these are things that are, might come from an external source. Now, in most work environments, really your virus scanning programs and other security measures are pretty well designed to protect against these dangerous files. As a precaution, the default here is that you would need to enable the content each and every time. This is a setting that might be something that you can change, but it does depend upon whether or not this is allowed in your organization. A lot of organizations will prevent you from changing these options in Excel. Right now, at this point, I'll enable the content. And now any updates that we might have would come forward as well because Excel is updating or referencing to those links whether or not those workbooks happen to be open. Let's look at some of the things that can happen when we have linked workbooks. That is, how we can make sure that we maintain those workbook links. I have this Wyoming file and it may not even be something that I realize is happening at the time. That is, that's often where we run into trouble. And I'm working on it. It happens to be open as well as that 
destination workbook, our sales summary. And at some point, perhaps I want to use it for a different purpose. I'm going to do a file save as, And I will let's call this Wyoming 2020. Now my intention is to, to use it for some other uh, planning, projection, for budgeting, but now I have renamed that. Although it might not be my intention, I have also updated the links that take place within this workbook our master workbook. Those are some of the things that can get us into trouble. Let's look at how we can fix that. In this case, I'll go going to go ahead and close this file. I'll also save and close the sales summary. It's fine if I have the other files open. I don't need to have those open. I'll close this one as well. Here I'm going to change some values, so I'll make this much more significant. Now my total is updated. I'll update the worksheet if I need to. This change is taking place in the source workbook. Let's see what happens when we open up that sales summary. I'm going to add one more challenge, one more element to this linking project. What happens if at some time along the way, a workbook is either renamed or moved? That will break the link. How can we correct that? For this example, I've renamed the Colorado file. Original workbook, Colorado no longer exists. Let's see what happens when we reopen that summary file. First, we'll see the security warning. And this is another way that we might see a warning that simply says that there are external links. And if you trust them, go ahead and update. Now what happened is that Excel was able to spot, hey, I can't find that link in Colorado. I can't. So we would have the opportunity to go ahead and fix that. But I'm gonna cancel out of here right now because what I want to have you see here is how you can fix it in other ways. That is, if Excel doesn't catch it, how can you fix it? How can you even just see if you even have links within a workbook? We find this under the Data tab. And then we have Edit Links. And if this is grayed out, that means that this workbook does not have links. Here you will see then a list of the links that exist within this workbook. And they could be links in many, many different locations. It doesn't have to be something as simple as this particular reference. One of the things that we can do just to make sure that we have integrity with those links is to select all of these. And so just clicking the first one, hold down shift, click the last one, and we choose update values. Excel is a I don't know what happened, where that Colorado file went, but I can't find it. So now we can go ahead and select that file. If that was not discovered, we'd also have the opportunity to change source. So that would be another option for us to be able to refer to and point it to the correct file. This also is an option for us to open the source. Right now, although it says that the values are okay on the Texas file, it's not currently open. Perhaps I wanna make changes to it so I could open the source for that as well. Now I'm gonna going to switch back to the sales summary and once again, go to edit links. The other problem we ran into before is without realizing it, we're now pointing to a different copy of that Wyoming file and that might not be the one that we want. So here again, we can change the source, reference that Wyoming file, the original one that we actually want to point to because perhaps that copy is has a completely different intention, might have new data to it, and we can then close. Notice here too that the New Mexico data has updated based upon some of those changes that we made earlier. Let's go back to the edit links for one more thing, and that is, what happens when you're done, when you want to finalize it. Maybe it's the end of a quarter, 
end of a year and you want to capture what it looked like at that point in time. You might not necessarily want to lose all of these links. You just simply want to have a copy that you could archive, could distribute, could share. It's also important if you're sharing it externally that you remove the links before you send it as an email attachment because an outside recipient isn't going to be able to work with or see those links. So they'll run into different error messages and things that will make it more cumbersome for them to be able to work with that data. Here's what we do. First of all, we can save the original, then we'll do a save as. And in this case, I'll simply make this my final. Next, we'll go to edit links. Now our intention this time is that we don't want to have any links. We'll go ahead and select all of those worksheets and then choose break link. You will be warned, which is good. <laughs> and now go ahead and break the links. When you close, notice that in the data ribbon, edit links is no longer available because this is just raw data. No links back to those source workbooks. But we are able to then finalize or capture the data at this point in time. And that gives you some options for how you can link data across multiple Excel workbooks. Now you've seen how to save time and effort in Excel by building links within a workbook and across multiple workbooks. Thanks for watching.